What's going on, Catterman and Catterwomen? Holy crap, bro! That's a big one. That's a big one. What the? What's going on, Catterman and Catterwomen? Welcome back to the channel. We are coming down to the end of 2018. And guys, it has been one heck of a year. Um, I, I have to say, first off, this year has been full of a tremendous amount of self-work for me. Um, it has challenged me many times. I have had to stop fishing as much as I wanted to and as I used to, which is one of the hardest things you could ever experience as a fisherman. I have gotten to a point where I really, really like the relationship I have with myself for who I am. I've grown internally beyond measures. I think the biggest issue I ever had was this feeling of inadequacy and insecurity about myself, my body, my looks, how I looked. And I'll tell you what, by doing what I enjoyed the most and by being how I am and how I like to portray myself, these feelings have gone completely away. Professionally, things have gone very well. As you guys know, I'm no longer with Cast King. But I was with them for a part of the year. Uh, I've worked with other people too. And there's plenty more awesome things happening in 2019. We didn't reach 2,000 subs this year. But we're on the cusp of that and we're going to be hitting that next year. And anyways, beyond measure, I want to thank you all of you so much for your support of the channel. And for your future support of the channel. And I'll tell you what, guys, if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, I highly recommend that you subscribe down below. Give this video a thumbs up to support your boy. And make sure to hit that bell so you're notified every time I upload a video. That's really important because some subs, for some reason, are not even showing my videos when I upload some. So hit that bell. Anyways, before this year ends, in about three and a half hours... I want to right now go through some of the videos of this year and just uh, some of the greatest memories, fishing memories that were put on YouTube and just talk about them. The backstory, the things that you don't know. So anyways, without further ado, I wish you all the best of the new year. Let's jump into this video. All right, so the first video that we're going to talk about here in the backstory is the bobbers are made for big catfish. And this was a review I did on the Muddy River catfishing bobbers, and this is all the way in June of 18. The reason why these videos were made so much later in the year was because I was entering my last semester of college. So in the last semester of college, you know, you, you have to do what you have to do. You got to grind. You got to study good. I'll tell you what, guys, I graduated with a 3.76 GPA, uh, magna sum cum laude honors. Uh, so the, the work that I did, you know, as you see, I didn't go fishing for the first time in my life. I was like, you got to stop fishing as much. Go grind. But long story short, let's talk about the story behind this video. I don't even know where our bobbers at right now. I just felt the entire rod just go boom. He wants to go. Goodbye. Open your mouth. It's time to mind your mind. <laughs> we have another fish on, guys. We have another fish, but this one looks it feels like a bigger fish. That's still a nice size flat head, guys. Look, look at that hook set, though. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Something really new and exciting just came in the mail, and it was sent to me. From <laughs> okay, guys, the backstory behind this video. So, uh, I got in contact with Chris Parrish on Facebook. Now, Chris Parrish is actually the creator of these these bobbers. He makes these at home, and so we started talking, you know. And I was like, "Dude, I see you catching all these fish with these bobbers. They look really, really awesome." And uh, you know, I would love to try them out one day. So. Uh, 
needless to say, I, I sent him the channel. I showed him, you know, the, this work that I make, this content. And he was like, dude, you know what? I'm going to send these bobbers your way. And I really want you to try them out and just do a review, a video on them. So I was like, heck yeah, man. I saw Chris Parrish and Chris Flores on Muddy River Catfishing do a review of these bobbers a long time ago. And I was like, damn, I'm going to be able to try those bobbers out too. That is fantastic. So Chris made some at home, sent me a batch. Was really nice of him. Dude, I really appreciate it if you're watching this video. And uh, I got everything together. You know, I got the bobbers in. I went to Walmart. I picked up the $1 uh, LED bracelets. Uh, I got the kayak ready in the back of the car. Uh, damaged my back actually in the process of lifting, which is why I have back pains nowadays. <laughs> So thanks, Chris. I headed out to the local river uh, where I catch my bait. I caught a bunch of sunfish. I, I loaded up some creek chubs on ice, too. And I was like, dude, let's head out. So drove about 45 minutes to get to the Schuylkill River. It's a hot, humid night out. I still remember this so clearly. I loaded up the kayak. Uh, it was a ton of work, I'll tell you that. But we got the kayak loaded up, the live bait ready, and headed out on the Schuylkill River near Philadelphia. And I got out there in a perfect little tiny spot. And uh, basically, long story short, you know, these LED lights looked so cool. And once I plopped them in the water, I had some cut bait on some live bait. And as you can see right here, that sunfish, yeah, <laughs> no go. So uh, anyways, as you can see right here, this is, this is what happened. <laughs> Yep, see, there you go. First flathead. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that seven foot ugly stick and medium heavy, too. It's such a great ride. So, yeah, fish after fish, guys. I couldn't believe it. Like, and the great thing, too, was. Like, I was so amazed because I was actually getting good hookups on live bait. Like, usually my hookup ratio with circle hooks, especially on live bait, has been horrible. Like, I am the worst. Like, I never get the hook set right. Like, it just, it sucks. So, in this case, we, I was using kale hooks, actually, as well. And that's what I usually reverted to. And so, by the end of the night, I'm using all circle hooks with live bait. I'm catching one flathead after the other. And I'll tell you what, there's nothing cooler than look at that, that watching that bobber go underneath the water. It's so exciting. I was like having so much fun. Uh, and there's nothing more exciting than hearing that bobber go like just sploosh underwater. And then you're like, where's the bobber? You reel back, you reel down, and next thing your whole rod's bent in half. You got pigs like that on the rod. Um, but yeah, I got torn up by mosquitoes that night. It was horrible. Every time I put the LED lights on around me, like this, it was just mosquito after mosquito. Um, but it, it really showed that these bobbers were really, really great. And from a kayak, especially in a river, I highly recommend them. By the way, the links are down below to those bobbers if you guys want to check that out. And the hooks I was actually using that I really liked were the Rip and Lip 7-odd uh, or 9-odd. I think 9-odd circle hooks. They're dual action circle hooks. They're red. They're really cool. I'll put, I'll put the links to all this stuff I'm talking about down below too. All right. Next up, we've got a video that I really had a lot of fun making. Now, when I was still with casking, my big thing always was to take our gear and test it to the max. Like I wasn't like, I'm going to use it how I should. I was like, I'm going to test it. And, you know, if it works, if it does great, it, it's going to be a big deal. Because, you know, people are looking for quality gear, guys. That's why I was always trying to tell the, the company, too. I was like, you know, so I'm going to test it to the max. That's just how I'm going to do it. Like, they would tell me, like, hey, we're trying to push or, pr or promote this product. You know, which a lot of companies will do when they come out with a new product. And uh, so I was looking at it, and I'm like, dude, this is like a seven-foot bass rod. Or, like, inshore saltwater rod. Like, what, what do you want me to do with this? Like, I'm a catfishing guy. I'm not a bass guy. So, uh, needless to say, Catterman was like, you know, I'm going to take this 
Parity 2 rod, carbon rod, uh, with some Fuji guides on it. And, uh, you know, I was like, I'm just going to test it, you know. And if it snaps, it snaps. That sucks. And if it doesn't, uh, it's going to be great. But I'm going to show all of you viewers that this is some this is some quality stuff. And uh, needless to say, I completely fell in love with the action of this rod. It was so much fun. It was like light action catfishing. I hooked a pretty big fish, guys, on the Parity 2 rod right here. This is what you call sound a flat catfish on the parakeet. Don't you guys just love my sound effects? I'm always like, Ooh. <laughs> look at that. Yeah, on the Sharky 3 Bait Feeder 3000. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh my god, drag race. Okay, so you might be wondering. Jeez, guys. Why? So yeah, and that's basically what happened, you know. So I picked up the rod because it was a new item we were trying to promote. I was like, you know what? Like, uh, heck yeah. You know, I'm going to do a video on it. Let's see. So um, I was like, I'm going to take the kayak out because, you know, me, guys, I love kayak fishing for catfish. I headed out to the inner city on the Schuylkill in Philly. Got some cut bait ready this time. I took off from a ramp that was really local and I actually talked to a bunch of guys beforehand that were really cool. They were trying to catch flatheads and they weren't catching anything. And then I took the kayak down further past some bridges on top of some structure and uh, there's some weed beds that open up into like this this like plane. And I only know that because I've snagged the weed beds and I've kind of felt them. I kind of got a feel for that area of the river. And I was like, dude. I love flatheads, like fishing for them along those weed lines, because they love to travel in the shadows of those weed lines and ambush fish. So I threw out the one rod, you know, and as you can see right here, I really like it, it had a stiff action and um, cast out the first piece of bait. And next thing, the clicker just starts screaming like, Zzz, you know, I hook up with the first fish. And uh, I mean, look, I mean, you can't see it that well because the video is pretty dark that night, but man like the rod actually held up pretty good it had a has a really nice backbone to it and paired up with 40 pound braid let's just say i bent these rods basically in half like there were some pretty nice sized flatheads caught on that rod like this is a dinky like a little baby but guys i caught some huge fish and it was just it was fun because all the drag rips all that stuff you know that was happening i i killed it that night too like when it comes to flatheads i I pretty much know what to do. Like I'm, I'm pretty good at catching them and figuring them out. Oh my god, this flathead! <laughs> yeah, when they would dive oh, underneath the day, kayak man. and like underneath them, I had to go like this because I couldn't put flathead. too much pressure on the rod. Parody rod. I gotta really admit, there's another beautiful flathead catfish right in the corner of the mouth. Buddy, do you mind turning around for a quick picture? He yeah, goes, it's a beautiful photo yeah. shoot now, isn't it? <laughs> wow, guys, gotta tell you something. That Perigee rod is freaking tough. Mm -hmm. I mean, these fish are in pretty heavy current, digging down. Yep. And that rod has no problem. Oh, whatsoever. that's right, too. It had rained the day beforehand, so the current was really high up. So these flatheads in current, guys, they already fight really hard. But when they get in the current, they open their mouth up and they catch all that current. And they become almost impossible to move, especially the big ones. So as you can see, the the secret bait of the evening was sunfish. So guys, if you can't catch gizzard shad like I do sometimes, it's fine. Sunfish works great for flatheads too. But yeah, I actually uh, ended up hooking up with a bunch of pretty big fish that night. Some almost in the 20-pound class from what I remember. I think actually one was above, like in the 22, 23 pounds. And uh, it was fine. I was like, listen, I'm going to set my entire rod up. I mean my entire arsenal up with these rods. For the kayak because they're light but they're pretty stiff and strong and that's because they're carbon made but uh yeah you see there's that pig oh my god man what a freaking giant what a huge fish look at that my pants are all slimed up too but uh, i was more prepared for the mosquitoes that night so i didn't get torn up as much as i thought i would but uh that's my second favorite video this year and that was in june also right past the muddy river catfish and bobber video all right the third video, favorite video this year has to have been 
well, it's a series of videos, actually. We're going to go through each of them real quick over here. But the first was taking my buddy Hunter from the Northeast Beasts. They've got an Instagram account, him and a bunch of his buddies, including Mark. And I took them flathead fishing last year, if you guys remember that. But um, I, I took Hunter to go shark fishing. Like, I told him, like, dude, you want to come? You've seen me catch some fish. Let's go. So we loaded up the rods and everything like that. We headed out. Uh, to the ocean we went down to cape may uh, you know i had a bunch of baits ready we we caught some uh, some extra bait in the surf real quick with some squid we just headed out uh got the kayak ready it was a really hot night there was tons of sand fleas around it, this was a really crazy night i'm going to tell you why in a sec but uh here watch this real quick what's going on catamaran and catawomen it's your boy the catamaran here from kevin's catamaran adventures today got a special guest on the show that we've had before first for his first time big flathead now for his first show <laughs> sharking son you get it where's the hooks at where's the big hook do we got one in here so we actually got the big bait box we had like 20 like i bought these 20 odd uh, circle hooks these giant circle hooks. this huge online and so i crimped down the barbs and uh we put them on the rigs and it was great man we loaded up the entire rig binder right there which is like a 20 dollars rig binder from casking with like 10 sleeves i really like it it's, it's it's a good binder it's very affordable and so um before you know it you know we hooked up with the first fish and high vis yellow cast pro and 80 pound durablend leader on that to stay attention with him all right, and so this is the cool part. So, you know, I told Hunter, you know, you you got to sometimes tell your friends, like, you're not going to catch something every night. It could be that tonight we don't catch anything, but I feel like this spot has a lot of fish. So uh, I just warned him. You know, I kayaked the bait about 350 yards out, and it was on a 7'6", a Catech rod from Casking, you know, on a Sharky 3, 6,000 bait feeder. Now, I personally, um, you're going to see this. But th th there wasn't enough strength and power in that rod to really wrestle this fish. So the fight took a lot longer than we wanted it to. But um, Hunter caught the biggest fish of his life. Because we just heard the clicker screaming. We ran over. We saw the rod bend over. It set the hook. And it felt like setting the hook into like a train. Like it just started going. And this I couldn't stop it. It was like zzzz. As you're reeling. Just keep reeling as you're walking towards him. Yep. Like a sand tiger. Absolutely, it's a sand tiger. It's a big one, too. <laughs> How's that rod handling, though? That backbone? Yeah, it's good. Right? No, no. <laughs> For a catfish rod, dude? Yeah. Hunter's such a liar. He was like, yeah, it's so good. But he's like, no, dude. Like, this rod doesn't have enough backbone in it to handle this fish. And it was a 7'6 heavy, which has really more of a medium action to it. Oh. Yo. <laughs> That's how we do it, bro. It's not even moving. Like I know, I know. That's why I say you got to move, walk further out there. We got to get out where. <laughs> he was like, dude, stop giving me all these directions, man. Yeah. Like, I'm just trying no, to no, get no, cool. no, I'm just checking. No, just focus on your fight. Focus on the fish. So At the same time, for sure. later, we pulled it up. He comes in, like, comes into the glowing green light, like, whoosh. You know, onto the onto some of the sand. So now? Boom, sand huge fish. sand tiger shark. Look at that, and the teeth and everything. I mean, what the frick? Those are the jaws. But these guys are really... And so we had to make sure we really resuscitate this fish quickly. So basically, we just dehooked it. I wanted to take a shot with Hunter. We took a really quick picture, but we couldn't film it. That's why I didn't include it, even though I really wanted to. And so we were like, all right, let's get this fish back. So I grabbed this sand tiger, started walking around like this with the fish for about like... I'd say like almost like 60 yards, like just walking around holding it because sharks can't breathe if there's no flowing water going through their gills. So we just made sure to have them go through some water and some current. And once I started feeling more power in the fish, pushed it forward, let it go. And it swam off into the evening. So this was a lot of fun to make. And now what happened was I was like, dude, so we waited till about 3 a.m. Because I was like, we got to wait. Like we got to see if we can catch another one because there's bigger ones out here. And Hunter got really tired. He started like passing out in the chairs, like, bro, like, I can't do this anymore. And so I checked 
the forecast and everything was fine you know we were going to be okay to fish the tide wasn't going to come in too strong at this location and so we're sitting there and we're looking out over the water and i know where this huge cloud comes literally moving across the water like it was really close down to the water this big dark gray cloud and slowly the whole sky gets gets just dark and it was eerie like and it was just there was no wind it was quiet and i know where right above us boom thunder like the whole sky just thunder and then a lightning bolt strikes down about 100 yards away from us on the right hits the sand and it was the scariest moment of my life we had like three rods out all of them are like 300 yards out and we were like oh my god like dude the forecast said zero percent chance of rain and now we have this big cloud above us angry and there's thunder rolling and lightning i was so scared for my life so we start running to the car and it, it, this wasn't recorded but uh, i think at the end i was like dude once we got everything in the car and we escaped the the lightning i was like dude like we we gotta we gotta like just take a quick video and we gotta drive and uh, basically we got the guy hanging out the back and there's it's raining and it's pouring like crazy and my car got completely soaked like completely what the hell <laughs> Hunter's like, yo, yeah, like that's your headlamp, bro. That's spazzed, spazzed out. Yeah. yeah. No, oh, and, so. and that was the thing too. You see, the thing is, when that lightning struck, and the thing is, I turned on my headlamp at the same time, and I know that one of the lights on my LED lights had flashed out beforehand. So when I clicked the light off, it flashed. Like we saw it flash, and I was like, "Did you see that?" And he's like, "See what?" I'm like, "Was that my headlamp? Did one of the lights just go out?" I look at him, and that's when I looked at him. That's when we heard with a thunder, and that's where we're like, "Oh crap, dude!" <laughs> we just looked at each other. know which video this is my favorite video i have to say and this is number four but this is my favorite video of the year to make was the new cast king catfish rods their testament so we came off finally with catfishing rods i was so excited you know this is when i was still with cast king i was so excited to finally have this catfish rods and i was thinking how am I going to make the biggest impact on YouTube with these rods that really aren't gaining a lot of traction for some reason? Because I really like the way these rods are built. I mean, the, the Cat Tech could have a better, stronger, stiffer action, but it's okay. You know, it, it'll, do, it'll do. So I had this brilliant idea. I was like, you know what? <laughs> it's July. I'm going to show what these rods are made out of. I'm going to take them shark fishing. And so my goal was to put these rods on sharks because sharks fight extremely hard, especially big brown sharks slash sand tiger. I mean, sorry, sandbar sharks. And so uh, I headed out to the ocean and I spent probably this was this took two, maybe three weeks of filming and trips and editing and and getting eaten apart by sand fleas and mosquitoes and countless of kayaking out baits i mean all nighters like you know 7 p.m till 8 a.m getting home passing out in bed getting back up again eating breakfast grabbing some chipotle heading back out again catching bait heading back out again guys insane amount of work but the payoff was tremendous the video is doing pretty good actually right now compared to some of my other videos we're grossing at about almost 2,500 views on that, which, you know, for my smaller channel right here is, is not bad. Let's catch some big fish on catfish rods. You know, and my big thing, too, was I really wanted to do a video, like a movie. I wanted to do a movie about this with emotion and so you can feel kind of the action building up and the tension. 
and I really wanted to kind of challenge myself to and see if I could be a film creator, you know, at this point, but still keep it realistic. Can I say for one thing, sorry to stop it, I know it looks beautiful, but that Eagle Talon 12 from 2011, that's the model, was the worst kayak I have ever owned. It is horrible, it is so unstable, I flipped countless of times in the surf with it and I could have gotten hooks in my legs, it, don't buy them. I throw it out. Yep. <laughs> this, you guys didn't see this. But actually what happened was is that I had taken so long to grab the bait to throw it out that I got a wind knot in my braid, like really badly knotted. And so the moment that this bait hits the water, you don't hear this, thank God. But I go, what the expect? Like I was cursing. I was screaming. I was so angry because the line had all gotten knotted up. So I had to kayak all the way back with these baits and cut about 40 yards of braid off of my spool because it it's, it was it was dunzo. There was nothing I could do about it. It was completely knotted up. And that was the coolest moment. Being there in the daytime, this is a place called Dog Beach in Longport. Uh, it attracts a lot of smaller brown sharks, not really big fish. Sometimes if you get lucky, you might catch a big one there, maybe even a sand tiger, but they're very rare around that inlet. Uh, and this actually, this video took place before I took Hunter to catch some sand tigers, which uh, to get to the point, I was catching a lot of small sharks. You guys know, but after a lot of work, I was like, I want to catch bigger fish. I've heard of reports of sand tigers being caught down there. And uh, so I went down there. I took some uh, some skate wing, actually, I had left over in the freezer. And uh, I put that on the hook. And uh, oh my God, guys. Like, I just heard out of nowhere the clicker just go. Zzzz. It slowed down. And then it was just clicking and clicking. And I'd never heard that before. Usually when brown sharks grab it, they just run and they go and that's it. But not this fish. So I reeled in this, and there was some slack actually on the line. I was like, crap, 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 crap. So I started running backwards, reeling in because sand tigers are famous for grabbing baits, running, and then coming back in shore with them, which is what you don't want to happen. Because one, they might run into your line and snap it with their really giant teeth and sharp mouths. And two, also because a circle hook doesn't hook well, when the fish is swimming towards you, you got to have them swimming away. But so I, I ran back and finally I connected and then I ran backwards. I set the hook and I've never felt such a force before. I just the moment I set the hook, he was moving forward. and It was like, Whoa! and it was incredible, incredible. First really big drag run from the start to, I mean, it was, it was fun. Like they say, they don't fight guys. They fight. <laughs> Guys, I think it's a sand tiger. Yep, I call it for a sand tiger. Oh my god, guys. First sand tiger ever. No way. Oh. No way. No way. Oh my You're god. Here. That was so incredible. Yep, and I'm running. I'm trying to grab the tail, and it tries snapping back at me. I was like, oh, dude. Got so many teeth. Oh my god, guys. Look. Look at this. Look at this. Look, and look how big she was too. Now, don't worry, I kept her in the water, you know, so she was doing fine. And so I took a quick pose with her. She was pretty tired from the fight. And, uh, you know, I got the hook out right there real quick. And uh, this, you shouldn't do this. This was stupid of me. You never pull them backwards because it drowns them. Um, but, you know, so what I did was then I resuscitated her a little bit and then I let her go and she swam off fine, thank God. So I watched it, I saw her swim around. And she sped up quicker and she went off into the sea. So I'm pretty sure she was okay. And uh, she swam off fine. <laughs>
But I'll tell you what, guys, that was the first sand tiger, tiger I'd ever caught. It was also pretty big. It was about, I'd say about eight and a half feet long, maybe longer, maybe even nine. And that was an incredible fish to catch. I mean, so much work went into it. And uh, I, I had a blast. It was so much fun. So much fun. Now, for the last video review that I really enjoyed making. It's actually two videos. And I'm actually going to tell you to check those out because we're getting pretty far into this video now. But that was catching blue catfish on this new coffee bait paste called the fish candy and you know i marinated a bunch of the baits in the in this bait marinade after mixing with a little bit of water so the molasses and caffeine and coffee grounds could stick to the bait guys fish after fish if you haven't watched this video yet both of those videos it's two parts go watch them right now here you go anyways in that re regard guys i appreciate you guys watching so much I hope you enjoyed this review of 2018. This was a great year, and I can't wait to see what 2019 holds for us. Again, make sure to leave this video a thumbs up, please, guys. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, I highly recommend that you subscribe. Have a safe New Year's, a great ride into 2019, and I will see you in the next year. Anyways, Catamaran Catawomen, it has been a pleasure. See you later. Catamaran Air! Thank you.